Hi, my name is Greg Lawhorn. Um, this is the first video that I'm making um, for uh, laser engraving. I have an X1, uh, I'm sorry, an X-Tool D1 Pro 20 watt. I'm new to lasering. I just, I got, I got it when it was first shipped just uh, a month or a month and a half ago. And I am in the process of learning uh, what there is to learn about doing all of this. Um, interestingly enough, there have been some uh, various people have made videos about how you can make money do this to do this. And I was kind of hoping that maybe I would be able to do this. And uh, some friends helped me make some connections. And I've been making tumblers for a local real estate agent. She is giving them to clients as houses close. And uh, that's actually producing a little bit of income. It's, it's enough to pay for the laser, which I'm delighted about. Um, I've got a setup, after having done this for a little bit, I've got a setup that I wanted to share. I haven't seen anything like it. And so uh, maybe it's not a new idea, and maybe it is a new idea, and it's something that you would be able to help, uh, that would be able to help you out. So let me switch the camera around and I will show you what I mean. Okay, this is not an unusual sight for many of you, including the mess and including everything that I've got set up. Um, uh, what is unusual, maybe for some of you, is what I have underneath it. So let me show you uh, what's going on here. Um, this, I'll just point with my foot if that's okay. This is a motorcycle jack that I picked up from Amazon. Uh, it's a 1500 pound jack. I'm certainly not going to lift anything like that. On top of that jack, I originally built a vacuum table. Uh, the, 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 the vacuum that I have is not a vacuum. You can see it under there. It's a f smoke filter and it doesn't have very much suction. And so that really didn't work very well. Um, and then I have, uh, you can kind of see through the gap there, I've got some two by fours, and then you'll see the, uh, the honeycomb on there. Now, the reason that I did that is I found that I was doing three different actions. I was making tumblers, and I wanted to engrave the bottom of the tumbler with uh, with uh, my information because I'm selling them. And so I wanted to have an engraving on the bottom that had my information on it. Uh, and then of course I use, there's the rotary sitting right there. I use the rotary in there. And, uh, and then I was cutting flat pieces. Uh, I was cutting flat pieces. For instance, I don't like using the the little guard thing um i found that at times it was bumping things on the rotary and so i've removed that and i created a a a way of measuring the height without using the little thing in the back the thing in the back is fine but sometimes i want to fine tune it so i have a 38 millimeter 39 millimeter and 40 millimeter and then I, it's very easy to set that on my work and get a measurement. And I want to cut flat pieces. So, you know, obviously that means removing those feet, right? We're all used to lifting this thing up and removing the feet. It's really a pain to lift it up and remove the feet when you have the enclosure on it. And so I was unplugging everything from the enclosure, removing the smoke thing, removing the air assist and the power for the fan. And I was constantly doing that, and it, it took up a lot of time, and uh, I'm always afraid I'm going to damage something. So I had the idea, uh, actually suggested by a friend, but I had the idea that if I built essentially a hollow table and then lined it like an elevator shaft, then I could build a table and I could raise the work to the laser. So I, I, I don't adjust the laser height now for, for the feet at all, you can see the leg back there. I don't adjust the laser at all. I raise the work and lower the work to 
to fit the laser. This little dealy bob is just because my floor is not level. My table was not quite level. It's all homemade. And uh, so what I did is I used T-nuts and then bolts. Underneath the bolts, I have those round cap nuts so that I don't have the bolt head sticking into the, uh, into the honeycomb. I have the round cap nut sticking down in the honeycomb and it just rides up. And so I'm able to put my little level on there. And I find that each one of these tumblers is a little bit different. Uh, so what I need to do here is lower a bit and as I turn those screws then I get level uh, and then I have to make adjustments here for the other side right no I want to go down again I'm not good at this. This is why I need something like this. Uh, let's see, which way does it go? I can't remember which way it goes. Oh, I want to go down. Yeah. See, this, this is why I need something that's quickly adjustable. And to keep it even just I just do a turn at a time the mugs are not exact the mugs are not exact I'm using the engraver head the engraver module um, as you can see here the regular module has I believe a, a six millimeter six millimeters of play so your focus point if it's within that six millimeters is going to be pretty good I think I read that the engraving module is one millimeter of play. So if the mugs were not level, uh, and I've, I've assured that the laser is relatively level, it's not showing too level right now, but I've, I've kind of played around with that. Um, if the mugs were not level, then I got a bad burn on that. So what I have, uh, in short, is a jack, and by the way, I have it on a cordless drill. I have also cut a knob that allows me to, uh, come on, oh, there it's on, that allows me to get a very fine adjustment on that. I can just leave that on there. Um, a, basically a chimney that traps smoke. Uh, and by the way, the uh, right here on the top of that board, I put some window ceiling with that brush stuff on it that helps trap a little bit more smoke. And it's quite, cut down quite a bit so that I can raise it up and down. I can raise my work up and down, and then I can level my work. Um, this is working well for me. It didn't cost too much to do, probably a couple of hundred bucks. I, I think that the most expensive part was the jack, and I think that was about $130, $140 on Amazon. Um, but the rest of it is working very, very well for me. So I just wanted to share that with you, and if you're able to benefit from that, that's awesome. Okay, so a couple of other things that I, I didn't mention. Um, it should be obvious to you what I'm doing there, but if it's not obvious to you what I'm doing there, um, I have my tumbler fit in a fixed position every time so that I can use absolute co coordinates. Um, I establish those coordinates every time I go to burn these bottoms. I do a box at a time, and it takes a minute or two to kind of get it established, but that's, that's really no big deal. Um, and then because I'm able to use the, uh, the absolute, uh, absolute coordinates when I back up, uh, when I home my, my, uh, my laser head, then I'm able to come right back to where I want to be. And uh, uh, sometimes it comes back a little bit. Odd. I'm not sure how it moves. I don't think I'm, maybe I'm moving it a little bit. 
when I uh, uh, maybe I'm moving it a little bit when I adjust that that certainly could be but that speeds things up uh, there was another thing I was going to show you oh the yeah just the the way that this the way that this jack handle works so I'll just give it a little bit of a twist or raise and I'll go ahead and put the, the focusing bar down and you can see that it's too close and as I turn the crank As I turn the crank, then it, it lowers the work. I found that I get a better result if I'm just a little bit close. So I don't let the uh, I don't let the focusing bar uh, go all the way straight up. I let I leave it at just a tiny bit of an angle there, and I get a pretty good result from that. So hopefully those two added bits will help you a little bit.